Alcatraz is undoubtedly one of the world's most famous prisons. It's well known for housing incredibly dangerous convicts, from Al Capone to Machine Gun Kelly, and it has a long history of prison break attempts. However, its legacy doesn't stop there. You see, there lies a series of remarkably preserved tunnels and buildings just inches below the surface, remnants that stand atop the island's little-known past from the Civil War. Today we discover the mystery of Alcatraz's lost tunnel system. I'm your host Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. Today we discuss the many hard realities of prison life, and all the things a man might miss when he's doing time. Priorities that are important to anyone, a loving relationship, good fitness, and skin care. This video is sponsored by Tiege Hanley. They have helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of the uh, dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because your skin should always be protected from the sun, and PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Tej Hanley is that every box comes with an instructional card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make the entire process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers from around the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tej Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free US shipping, plus low cost shipping to most other countries. And because Tej Hanley is sponsoring this video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the link in the description box and you'll get 30% off your first Tej Hanley box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and start today. And now, let's head back to the forgotten tunnels of Alcatraz. Let's set the stage by talking about the island's original inhabitants. You may be surprised to hear that Alcatraz served a similar purpose to the Native Americans who lived there even before there was a prison built. They believed that the island was home to evil spirits and those who broke tribal laws were often banished from society there. They also collected bird eggs and fished there. It wasn't until 1775 that the island got its name when a Spanish naval officer sailed to San Francisco Bay and chartered it. Because there were so many pelicans, he actually named it the Island of Pelicans. It wasn't until after the Mexican-American War that the United States gained control over California and the island with it. After it was sold to the United States government in 1849, the U.S. Army quickly took advantage of the island's strategic position. In 1853, construction started on a fortress at the top of the island as a part of a project to defend San Francisco Bay at the peak of the California Gold Rush. Construction began with shops, offices, barracks, and even a temporary wharf. The laborers cleverly used the island's natural ruggedness in the defense plan. Rock was blasted away and replaced with brick and stone, forming defensive walls around the island. By the following year, the island became home of California Coast's first lighthouse, and 11 out of the eventual 111 cannons were mounted. However, it took many years to complete the fortress since most laborers found gold mining in California to be much more appealing than the grueling work at Alcatraz. The issue of acquiring building materials also impeded progress as most of the granite came from China and the sandstone came primarily from Angel Island. Additional structures included outbuildings and roadways. The finished fortress had a fortified guardhouse, enclosed guns, and a citadel that functioned as a last line of defense and armed barracks. It was only accessible by drawbridge over the dry moat surrounding the entire building and had multiple stories. It was able to hold up to 200 soldiers and was stocked with provisions to withstand a four-month siege. Historians have traced the time of the tunnel construction to this era 
as a part of the original Civil War era structures. In 1859, the first troops were permanently garrisoned on the post of Alcatraz to defend the Bay Area. It wasn't long before Fort Alcatraz became one of the most powerful coastal defenses in the West, and with that, other forts started sending deserters, escapees, and other prisoners to the island thanks to the frigid water and swift currents making it extremely difficult to escape. On August the 27th, 1861, the island was officially declared a military prison for the Department of the Pacific, and just two years later, the Union Army learned about the plot of a group of Confederates who planned to overtake San Francisco Bay. They intended to use an armed schooner to capture a steamship, which they would then use to blockade the harbor while they launched an attack on the fort. Their plan was exposed to the Union officials thanks to the schooner's captain who bragged about it while drinking in a tavern. The United States Navy then seized the ship, arrested the crew, and towed the boat to Alcatraz. The schooner Confederates were captured and sent to join all the other military prisoners alongside civilians who were arrested for treason. As you might expect, it didn't take long for Alcatraz's cells to fill up. The prison needed more space, so a temporary wooden prison was constructed and later replaced by a series of connected structures called the Lower Prison. 1864 marked the installation of bomb-proof barracks and 15-inch Rodman cannons. And by the end of the Civil War, the island had over 100 unused cannons. After the Spanish-American War in 1898, Alcatraz saw the arrival of many more imprisoned soldiers. By the end of the 19th century, the prison's population had grown to over 400. Those in charge faced a familiar issue. The prison was running out of space. This led to the construction of a new complex called the Upper Prison, while the Lower Prison was turned into a workshop for prison labor. While the Upper Prison was initially made of wood, it was later rebuilt with concrete after a fire in 1906. But it would only be a year before one of Alcatraz's most significant transformations. Thanks to the expansion of the US Navy, it became more and more evident that Alcatraz's military capabilities were no longer necessary. In 1907, Alcatraz was redesigned as the Pacific Branch United States Military Prison. Prison guards replaced soldiers and military personnel, and the old fort was almost entirely razed to the ground. Then, a block of 600 cells was built on top of the fort basement and moat. Each cell was made with reinforced concrete and equipped with both toilets and electricity. The island then became known as the Pacific Branch United States Disciplinary Barracks. Three years later, and with an emphasis on education and rehabilitation, men with less severe offenses attended military training, remedial education, and vocational training. This program was allegedly so effective that most soldiers were restored to active duty after serving their sentences. Those with more severe offenses were not so lucky. They were dishonorably discharged from the army after serving their terms. During its time as a disciplinary barrack, it might surprise you to hear that Alcatraz was once a minimum security prison. Many inmates tried to escape during this time. Their methods ranged from secretly boarding boats, swimming, or using driftwood. One notably successful attempt occurred on November the 28th, 1918. Four prisoners escaped on rafts and were presumed dead only to later reappear in the Suro Forest. Despite its successes, however, Alcatraz would face hardships soon after. By 1933, it was clear to authorities that Alcatraz was much too expensive to operate. Its remote location helped and hindered it. While it was extremely difficult for prisoners to escape, it also made it difficult to import supplies. Coincidentally, Alcatraz fell into difficult times during the gangster era, sprawled on by the lingering effects of the Great Depression and Prohibition. Violence swept cities by storm, and existing prisons struggled to contain the swell of escapees, rioters, and gang-related murders. In response to this crime wave, President Hoover proposed that Alcatraz be transformed into a super prison. This super prison would house only the most dangerous criminals and provide them with no means of escape. It would also ideally intimidate and deter would-be criminals. And after several negotiations, Hoover's plans succeeded 
and Alcatraz was transformed into the Bureau of Prisons in October of 1933. 1934 marked the end of Alcatraz's occupation by the U.S. Army and its transition into a prison. Most prisoners were transferred to different prisons and construction began on the new Alcatraz soon after. On January the 1st, 1934, the Bureau of Prisons began the lengthy process of taking Alcatraz from minimum to maximum security. Four guard towers were constructed around the island and the cells were rebuilt and equipped with steel cell fronts and locking devices that were toolproof and operated from control boxes. Every window was also toolproof and had steel window guards. Two gun galleries were built in the cell block that allowed armed guards to oversee all inmate activities. The mess hall and main entrance had built-in tear gas canisters in the ceiling to help break up potential riots and could be remotely activated from the gun gallery and the outside observation points. Metal detectors were installed at workshop entrances and outside the mess hall, and electricity and sanitary facilities in each cell were also upgraded. All utility tunnels were cemented so prisoners could not hide in them or even enter them. Living facilities for prison guards, including wood frame houses, apartment buildings, and a duplex were also installed this time. Despite the security level, there were still many escape attempts over the years. One of the most famous being the Bloody Battle of Alcatraz, which occurred in May of 1946 and left 15 injured and five dead. However, all was not well. You see, the costs of running such a remote federal penitentiary were quickly adding up, just as they had before. The expenses were massive compared to other facilities at that time. The constant exposure to the salty sea air also caused the buildings to crumble and fall apart. After three decades of operation, Alcatraz closed its doors in 1963, having housed over 1,500 men. But its story is far from over, thanks to an incredible discovery made by researchers just a few years ago. In March of 2019, researchers discovered a series of tunnels and buildings underneath the prison. However, while it is understandable to assume that prisoners used these tunnels during escape attempts, the truth is that they served a far different purpose. Dating back to the Civil War, War, these structures proved a long-standing theory by many historians that the prison was in fact built on top of an old military fortification. The tunnels and buildings also held leftover ammunition magazines. Archaeologists used radar, historical maps, photographs, and terrestrial laser scanners to examine the ground underneath the recreational yard without disturbing the site itself, and they continued to study what lies beneath the surface in the hopes of discovering even more. Timothy DeSmet, an archaeologist and co-author of the study published in Near Surface Geophysics, said the remnants of fortifications weren't erased from the island, they were right beneath your feet. The remains of these historical archaeology features were just a few centimeters beneath the surface. They were miraculously and impeccably preserved. The dungeon also remains, the first level of the stronghold, which was repurposed many times during Alcatraz's history. Though Alcatraz's heyday is over, it's fascinating that researchers are still discovering more about it. The fact that these remnants of the Civil War era have sat undisturbed beneath the surface for so long makes you wonder what else lies beneath Alcatraz, as well as many other famous historical structures. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining and subscribing for more fascinating its history. And don't forget to support our sponsor, Tiege Hanley, by clicking the link in the description below so that you can start your skincare routine. Until next time, guys, this is Ryan Sokash, signing off.